What's going on everyone? ODC here and I am back with another live action figure review. Today's review we're going to take a look at the Marvel Legends Sauron Build-A-Figure Wave. This is Omega Red. Uh, this is the second figure that I've purchased in this wave. The first one was Bishop. I've already done that review. If you want to go back and check that out, you can. Um, but uh, today we're going to focus on Omega Red in general. Um, I actually picked this up at the current Columbus toy show that I went to. I go to once a year to visit my good friend Strident and uh, picked this up there. Uh, got it for regular retail price, which was uh, $20. So, um, yeah, nothing uh, nothing too crazy there. Um, pretty happy about picking up for regular retail as I saw a bunch of other vendors there at the time selling them for $25 to $30. And I was just like, eh, that's not really worth it to have uh, $25, $30, uh, spend $25 or $30 for this figure um, when you can get it for retail. Zorpox, what's up, buddy? Um, he does come with some accessories. As you see, there are actually two accessories attached to him uh, to begin with, one here and one here. Um, a little bit, I got a little bit of lag in this video, so I apologize for that. See, I'm waving this. There we go. Maybe it's getting a little bit better. I'm not sure, but... Uh, but anyway, he also comes with two other tendrils, and they are not similarly shaped. They are shaped in different ways. They are not a bendy wire, but I'll get to that in a second. He also comes with the Sauron Build-A-Figure piece, which is the left leg of Sauron, which I do plan on actually picking this entire Build-A-Figure up, but I'm probably going to outsource the rest of the pieces as, as far as... I just don't feel like getting three more Deadpools and a Wolverine. I, I just don't really care about. Um, but uh, let me check uh, chat here really quick. And we'll get to the review. Oh, uh, Zorpox, I'm glad you checked out the toy talk. It was funny. <laughs> I, I, had, I had issues that night, I know. Uh, but... Um, uh, Taking a look at the figure here, it looks really good. I'm really pleased with um, the overall body. This is a new body mold for Omega Red. I'm going to bring in the old Omega, Omega Red in, uh, in a little bit just for a size comparison and uh, a, a couple other little uh, nuances here and there that um, pr just kind of um, separate each other, uh, separate each figure from each other. Uh, but taking a look here... Um, you know, I, I did notice that he is kind of bare bones as far as paint applications go. Um, he's pretty much just a white, red, and then a um, this kind of silver is, is almost like a plasticky silver. Um, it, it seems like this whole mold is all silver right here. Um, let me get my pointer out here. This whole mold for his uh, chest piece and shoulder pads and harness and everything is all a silvery plastic, and then they just painted in the red uh, on his little capsules right here, and then on the shoulder pads itself. The head actually does have some paint shading in it. There is some um, white streaks going throughout the head uh, with the blonde. It, it might not be picking up in camera, but you can kind of see a little bit of it there. But there are some white streaks going throughout, and I'm kind of surprised. It's like if you decided to give us some uh, paint shading going throughout the hair. Why didn't you give it uh, a little bit of black paint shading going throughout the uh, the thighs here and maybe a little bit on the arms? Uh, even if they didn't do the arms, it would have been nice to have some black paint shading going throughout the the legs, just so it, he didn't he doesn't look so bare bones. Because pretty much when you take this piece off, um, it, it does get um, uh, it does, the body does look a little bit, uh, I don't know, I guess I would say, uh, plain, uh, but we'll get to that in a second. Also, uh, I do want to showcase the, um, let me just stand him up here in a vanilla pose here so we can get the overall height of him. We're going to do plenty of size comparisons and whatnot, but he is rather large. He's actually larger than the Hyperion body mold, which is surprising. Uh, like I said uh, earlier, he is on a new body mold. This is an all-new sculpt. 
This is actually the sculpt I was hoping the new Sabretooth would have been on, but he's not. He's not, he's on the old Hyperion body mold, which is a shame. So, um, but I digress. Anyway, um, here are the two tendrils that he comes with. And like I said, they are sculpted differently. Um, here they are next to each other, kind of facing the same way. And as you can see, they are molded differently. They are not a bendy wire. They are just straight up plastic, very similar to the route they decided to go with Dr. Octopus, except obviously this is a much thinner rubbery type plastic. Um, they can be removed from, right, from his uh, gauntlet right here. And these are just kind of the smaller versions. It's nice that they actually it did include some smaller versions, so you don't have to have these long ones just kind of constantly uh, getting in the way if you don't want those out. Um, they are universal, so you can peg them into either side. There's no wrong or right or wrong way to put them in. Um, or I just to say wrong way to put them in. As you can see there, let's get him into a somewhat reasonable pose so he doesn't look all stupid and stiff and <laughs> <He's> like <"Arr!" laughs> there's the tendrils coming out um you can get uh, the uh, the tendrils around someone's neck or head um i'll I, you know i'll attempt to do that in a little bit but i just kind of want to get the overall look and feel for the figure before i get to all the other comparisons and what it can and can't do and all of what else but uh this is pretty much what he looks like overall i think he looks pretty good i do like like i said it's nice that we're getting new body molds um i think the hyperion body mold um is my least favorite of the body molds but i i don't think i don't believe in chucking body molds just for the sake of having a new one in um i i think it still has a place for specific characters that need to be a specific size. Um, <laughs> as much as I don't really care for the anatomy of it and how, I don't know, the ab crunch clicks in certain places and it doesn't want to click in other places, the, the neck joint also wants to ratchet in a specific um, area instead of having the full range of motion of how the neck should range. Um, it kind of wants to put be put in specific spots if you know what i'm talking about same thing goes for the uh the ab crunch it's nothing new it's it's all stuff that we've seen prior with marvel legends so but i just kind of wanted to point that out that um uh because I, I did hear i think uh what was it uh that the the bucky cap body mold might be getting chucked which is another body mold which i actually don't agree with um uh, being 86th I feel like if you if you do that, you're taking away from the variety we can get for other characters that are on the smaller side or need to be in that in-between mold where you have this, you have your Build-A-Figure style, you have your, um, you know, uh, you have your characters like, uh, I think Bishop should have been on this body also. It would have been nice if Bishop was around the same size as Cable, uh, where Bishop is actually smaller than Cable. Which is, uh, I guess, I mean, I don't know. I guess it all depends on your personal preference on how you like Cape or Bishop being drawn. But Omega Red, I think, fits with this body mold. It's nice to see that he's got his own body mold. So we can refer to this as the Omega Red body mold. Uh, but uh, it's pretty nice. I'm liking it. I really like the uh, the head sculpt. Uh, Bentley Nash, what's up? I'm going to give everybody a shout out that, that decided to stop by. MG Villain, what's up, man? But uh, here's the face sculpt. I think it looks pretty good. The um, I kind of wish that maybe there was a little bit better detail in uh, the, I guess I want to say the uh, the metal cheek pieces, kind of that uh, elongated smirk that he has, which uh, it would have been nice. But I, I still think the head looks good. I, I'm pretty pleased with it. Uh, I've also would have maybe preferred a white Omega Red symbol on his bandana, but yet again, it, these are nitpicks. This is personal preference stuff. It has nothing to do with it making or breaking the figure. So I like the uh, the paint applications going throughout the gauntlet with the Omega Red symbol. I think the uh, the symbol looks pretty crisp and clean. 
Uh, I mean, there's a little bit of splotching on there for the silver, uh, but it's not the end of the world, as you can see right there. Not a big deal. Um, or flipping it around to the other side. The other side is much more crisp and clean. Um, but, you know, they, they both look good. So uh, The paint apps on the harness are very limited, but they are there. Like I said, the shoulder, pad or, uh, shoulder pads excuse me, are painted. The caplets right here are painted. And uh, I think it looks pretty solid. Uh, I believe that this is also painted a different type of like a more of like a metallic silver right here on the belt buckle. Uh, moving down to the knee pads. The knee pads are nicely sculpted into the knee joint themselves. I think it looks pretty good. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, like I said, again, this is just a silver. Uh, I believe this is just a silver. No, it's all red. Sorry, I, I take that back. I apologize. Um, this is all just a red plastic. Uh, with some silver painted over the red, as you can see right here. And you can tell that by the other side where it's got all red molding uh, going throughout on this side. So there's that bit of information. The reds do uh, do kind of uh, differentiate going throughout some of the plastic body mold right here. He does have a darker red on the the lower torso, upper torso, and the legs are, are like a lighter red. The gauntlets are a lighter red. Uh, the shoulder pad reds actually do match these. Uh, so there's a little bit of difference there, and I think that's just a difference in plastics. Uh, so there's that to point out. And then we'll just get these smaller ones back in here so I can do articulation and whatnot. It's not crazy in the way, you know. But there you go. I think I like. I think I'd like to have one with a smaller tendril and then one with a long tendril. I don't know. We'll see how it goes. It, whatever saves space. I mean, this really is going to save a lot of collectors' space. And if you're like me and you're in dire need of of saving space for for other displays, this is probably the route I'm going to go. Dem guts. What's up, man? Welcome to the live review, buddy. Oh, don't worry, guys. I'm gonna do some chatting after the review. I just kind of want to get through the review first, and then we can all we could chat it up after. But there you go with that. As far as his articulation does go, his head can swivel full 360, and this one's for you, Strident. I know how much you love full 360 rotation. So snap the neck, and now he's dead. Uh, <laughs> um. The arms go up about that far down. Uh, they can go a full 360 rotation, but uh, this is actually hindering in the way. Um, he can do a full 360 at the bicep swivel, a double jointed elbow, which gets, that's about maxed out right there. Um, and he can go straight, that's maxed out going straight. The wrist can swivel. He does have a swivel here because these are pegged in uh, for the tendrils. So, and he does also have a wrist hinge, which goes in and or up and down technically. So you can get that. And then the same thing goes for this side. It goes back and forth. Um, or technically, I guess if you put it this way and you bring it up and down, it can go up and down, but there is a hinge joint in there as well. Waist swivel. He does have an ab crunch, which crunches forward nicely. Really good deep ab crunch there with this new body mold. Can crunch back. He does do the splits, actually better than Spider-Man does the splits, so eat your heart out, Spider-Man. Uh, the legs go forward, and they go back just a hair due to the sculpting of the rear end. He does have a bicep, or a, <laughs> a thigh swivel, excuse me, double jointed knees, ankle hinge, which is really deep, going forward, and points a toe nicely, so points a heel and toe very nicely. And the ankle pivot and two peg holes at the bottom of the feet and all that nonsense. Um, now taking off the harness, you want to pop the head off. Then you want to just pretty much detach it there. There are two peg holes right there. And I hope in future releases, oh, also in the articulation department, he does have butterfly joints. So I apologize for not including that. I just actually forgot about it. So I apologize for that. So that was me not doing my job properly. But he does have butterfly joints, which I think from here on out, 
Uh, as far as new body molds go, if they're going to keep continuing giving us body mold, new body molds, they all need to have bicep swivels or uh, butter, blah, blah, butterfly joints, not bicep swivels. God. But this is what he looks like. There are two pegs, peg holes in there. And as I was alluding to, I hope they fill these peg holes for future releases using this body mold. Hopefully they will. We don't. We won't have to worry about that uh, down the line. But there he is, bare bones, pretty much. You can take the tendrils out also, and that's pretty much it. Um, so if that's important to you and you needed to see him without his harness or needed to know any information about that, you have all the information now that you need. And clipping it back on is pretty easy. Didn't take me long to do that at all. And popping the head back on is nicely done. As well so let me get him standing upright and then we'll do some size comparisons here as I back him up uh, I'm gonna go get a couple figures really quick I got a uh, build a figure here handy so you get a really good size comparison of him uh, let me go get the original and hopefully I don't knock everything over yikes 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 okay there we go that body mold, we'll get this body mold, and we'll get this body mold. And why not? We'll get one more body mold. There we go. And there we go. Alright. Got a few body molds to compare to. Alright, first up, move him over here. First up, we'll go from largest to smallest. So, actually, first up, we'll do the original versus the new one. As you can see, the original is much larger than this new one. And this new body mold is large, is on the larger side. So, and you'll see that when I show you. Uh, hey, Indy, what's up, man? Welcome to the review, man. Um, Oh, like, like I said here, uh, I, I really like the uh, black paint shading going throughout here. Uh, I would say that he's got, oops. I would say that in certain areas, and I think this is just because this is an older figure, uh, there is some paint right here kind of dulling and turning pink right here. Um, but I would have preferred a little bit of black paint shading going throughout the thighs here just so this didn't look so kind of plain a little bit on the lower torso side. Uh, a little bit of black paint shading would have nice been nice going throughout the arms, but I'm not going to really nitpick the arms too much. Uh, but just a little bit would have went a, f a, a further route for me. Um, also, a little bit more detail with boots would have been nice for this, but uh, obviously this is going to be used for other figures, so that's what they have planned down the line. So I guess they didn't want to retool or tool this too much to Omega Red, but. Because we all know how Hasbro likes to reuse molds. But um, I don't know. I mean, I guess this is kind of uh, pick your poison. Uh, which one do you like better for yourself? Uh, I would say paint app wise, this guy still is is got it over this guy. I'd say um, height wise and size wise, he I think he looks a little bit better. I think this is in one, one of the few cases where I would say that the, the Toy Biz one is actually my preference over the Hasbro one. I, I don't know. Maybe it's just me. Uh, I think the sculpt is better. I think the articulation is pretty much on point as far as uh, equaling each other out. Let me see if he's got butterfly joints. He does not. Oh, wait, does he? Oh, he does have butterfly joints, but they go up and down. Let me just show you. They go up and down like this, where this guy's goes back and forth. So left and right up and down so different types of articulation but the, i think they kind of maybe cancel each other out he actually does i think he might have more articulation due to the boot cut swivels right there and i think he's got does he have toe articulation i can't remember no he does not have toe articulation so there's a a couple little differences there he does have an ab crunch he's got an ab crunch he's got double jointed elbows he's got double jointed elbows um, he does have hand articulation, so there's a difference there, but 
Uh, it's kind of pick your poison there. Some people like hand articulation, some people don't. So, like I said, it, it's all about what your personal preference is here. Um, so, uh, I'm just saying, me personally, I still think I prefer this over that. I just like the paint apps a little bit better. That's just my thought process on that. Anyway, actually, let me see if the tendrils will fit in the old one. They will not. I mean, they kind of will. There you go. Because this guy actually used the Sentinel tendrils from the Build-A-Figure for his tendrils. So, I guess if you wanted to glue these in, you could use them. But they're not going to form the way you want them to because they're just a plastic mold. So, there's that little bit of information for that. So, there's that comparison. And now we'll go largest to smallest here as far as those go. Here we have Sasquatch, and he does tower over uh, Omega Red here. And I'll just put them back to back as well, so you can see the difference there in size. Sassafras is back in the review. <laughs> Sassafras! Well, Sassafras! All right, I'll get him up here a little bit further. Up next, as far as size goes, we bring in the uh, the Hulk here, and he fall right over, of course. Come on, buddy, work with me, not against me. Um, he is uh, the Hulk is obviously dwarfed Omega Red here. Here they are, back to back. There you go. And then uh, get the Hulk out of there. Up next, we have the uh, one of my favorite Build-A-Figures, the Absorbing Man Build-A-Figure. Come on, work with me. And he's larger than Omega Red. And here we are, back to back. Up next, we have Sabretooth, a little bit smaller than Omega Red. And here they are back to back. So this is the body mold I wish Sabretooth was on. I feel like Sabretooth really could have benefited from having these butterfly joints here. And then up next, we have the Bucky Cap body mold, which is one of my favorites of all time. And the Bullseye body mold. This is a good one, too. I should probably grab that one, too, huh? I should, shouldn't I? Stop being a dingleberry and get it done. All right. Do that. And there they are back to back with the Bucky Cat body mold. And here's Bullseye standing upright. And he's taller than Bullseye. Back to back. And last but not least, we've got Rogue. So, he's obviously taller than Rogue. And back to back. And there you go. Taking a look at the Build-A-Figure piece, which I do want to get to. We'll get him out of here really quick. Here is the Build-A-Figure piece. Really nice sculpting going throughout the leg. With, um, I want to say, oh, the majority of this. I really do. I, I am excited to uh, finish this Build-A-Figure. I have a wing. And uh, I have a leg now. So, one, two, two, two steps closer to completing this guy. I kind of wish there was a little paint apps on those toes, but I can always paint them black. That's not a big deal. It's not a deal breaker. So there's the leg. And uh, bringing back Omega Red in here. Let's just bring him back in here. Let's get him into a little posy schmozy. Let me get this, uh, one of the long tendrils over here. This might be how I display him. And you can actually get some pretty good range of motion. 
in the head. I don't think I don't um, I might have been really screwed up here in this review and not included the fact that he has a hinge joint in his head. I think I did. So slap me around and call me Susan. Okay, Susan. There's a blank man reference. I couldn't help myself. But there you go. He is pissed. He is pissed. That is a shitty pose. But you know, you get the you get the idea here. Not really spending a whole lot of time here. Pose. But he's gonna fall over. He's totally gonna fall over. But I gotta get one more special guest. Because it wouldn't be right if I didn't, right? And of course, who is that? No. Gambit fell over again, of course. Here is uh, <laughs> Wolverine standing completely upright next to Omega Red being bent down, and Omega Red still taller than him. <laughs> so, um, I mean. If you're going to display, the, uh, especially Omega Red, I would probably, I mean, probably want to display him with uh, Wolverine. Let's just get these, uh, let's get these tendrils wrapped around his head. Like, because that's probably what you're going to want to have done. And like I said, it, it's not too bad. It does actually wrap around his head. So, I mean, I know he's kind of in this vanilla pose right here and he's just letting him do it. But you can get them to, to go around the the head or the torso or the arms and legs, stuff like that. So you, they are a little bit, you can work with them uh, quite a bit. So it's not like they said, the worst thing in the world to not have the bendy wire. Obviously I would prefer, and I'm sure a lot of other collectors would prefer the bendy wire, but we did not get it. doesn't seem like we're getting a whole lot of it. Um, there they are standing upright next to each other. I think it's a, I think it's a pretty good size. As far as I'm concerned, uh, and if you don't have the Toy Biz one, and you and you only have this one, or you only plan on getting this one, this is still a really nice Omega Red. Uh, don't get me wrong; I don't really have an issue with it. Um, and even though the uh, you know obviously uh, in a lot of depictions the Omega Red symbol on his bandana is actually not painted or a different color, so it's pretty much just a red symbol. So that's not the biggest deal in the world either. I think I just think it looks it would look a little bit better. Um, even if that's not his original design. But, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I like him uh, overall. Uh, if you, you know, I guess I thought that this version was going to be, I don't know, maybe a little bit better than the Toy Biz one, but I think it's maybe on par, maybe not as good. Uh, it's just my personal opinion, but that's that's the opinion I'm sticking to. I still kind of prefer my Toy Biz one. I think I like the way he looks, stature. This guy is a little bit thicker. Obviously, with a new technology, he's going to have a little bit better um, uh, thickness to him, like he should. More muscularity to him, uh, where the Toy Biz one's a little bit skinnier. But, I mean, it's not really... I mean, you go look at his thighs, and they're obviously much skinnier. But, you know, obviously there's different different artist renderings out there so um i guess you could take that for what it is uh this is still a good figure i would definitely still recommend it so there's a two thumbs up there's another thumb there you go you got the two thumbs up i like the accessories he comes with um i'm trying to think if maybe i would have thrown in one more accessory but i'm trying to think of what specific one i would throw in there uh nothing's really popping in my head um uh, I think the uh, the tendrils were a nice touch with two different sets. Uh, I don't really think he needs anything else. I think this is properly done. So um, I would definitely pay retail for him. Uh, I don't know if I would exceed anything of thirty dollars. Like I said, I was I was fortunate enough to find him for twenty at a toy show. So um, I would say you know down the line, if you don't feel like spending the money now, um, and it ends up garnishing the price of 30 bucks i think it's still not a bad price uh include especially if it's including shipping i think that's a that's a halfway decent price you give them for 25 and, and shipped i think that's a decent price too because you're really only paying five bucks for shipping over retail so but um yeah so two thumbs up here i would definitely recommend picking up omega red 
And uh, yeah, I'm going to get to some comments now. So if you only came for the review, you can stop watching if you want to. And I'm going to do a little live chat discussion now. Um, that's what I do with all my live reviews. I get through the review, even though I went 30 minutes on the regular review. Uh, <laughs> but uh, yeah, this is the time where I start talking to uh, my, my peeps. So MG Villain, I'm just going to give everybody a shout out really quick. Uh, Zorpox, what's up? MG Villain, what's up? Bentley Nash, what's up? Dem Guts, what's up? A Andy, what's up? Private Private, what's up? And uh, yeah, let's uh, start chatting it up. What would you guys think about, uh, um, or how was everyone's weekend, by the way? Uh, oh, you're still, Private Private says you're, st you're still waiting to find, find any from this wave. Um, this wave just kind of uh, it just kind of popped up within the last month, so I would I wouldn't worry I wouldn't worry too much about not finding something. It, the, like I said, these and for some reason this wave I think it, it's uh, the Deadpool waves are going to be well distributed, like the first wave was, where people were kind of rushing and maybe overpaying for some of those figures in the beginning. Um, it, it's not a bad idea to kind of wait things out a little bit and just be a little bit more patient. The only reason I actually got Bishop and I got Omega Red was because I got really good deals on them. Um, so uh, I, I know that the Omega Red, I even saw the X23 Wolverine going for around 30 bucks now, which is kind of uh, like a little, con you know, obviously the, the community must really want those, but I think it's a, tw a good $20 figure. Oh, there's one around the... Yeah, I would pick it up, man. If it's at Dwayne Reed, I'd, I'd snatch it. Uh, Dem Guts, are you from New York City? Because that's what... I always think of... Because my sister lived in New York City for about seven years, and I would go visit her all the time, and I'd always stop at Dwayne Reed. Um, <laughs> but that's that's always what I think of when I hear Dwayne Reed. I think of New York City, so... Oh, you're in Manhattan? Okay, yeah. My, my sister lived in Greenwich Village for about seven years, so... Yeah, she was right in Manhattan, too. Um, he had to work all weekend. Yeah, I was fortunate enough to you know be able to go on a trip. So I'm not trying to brag or anything like that. I'm you know I got to go to work tomorrow. So flight just got in today, and I was kind of just chilling, relaxing all day. So hanging out with the dog because I missed him. I missed missed my my cookie dog. Good boy. <laughs> Uh, did I watch All In and my thoughts? Uh, I have not. I watched clips of it. I didn't get a chance to watch the whole thing. I was actually working overtime when All In was going on. So, um, but, uh, yeah, I, I saw clips of the show. There's things that I didn't like about the show. There's a lot that I did like, though. I would say that the, the stuff that I did like outweighed the stuff that I didn't like. Like, I didn't like the whole... Macho Man, Hulk Hogan thing that Flip Gordon and um, Jay Lethal did. I thought that was like, uh, this is about the the Ring of Honor title. Let's keep let's let's keep it about the Ring of Honor title and not about silly gimmick match. I, I don't know. Uh, that it's like I say, it's just not my cup of tea. I like I don't know. Maybe I take wrestling a little bit more seriously when a title's on the line, you know. But it's okay. It's not like I don't think anyone thought that Flip Gordon was actually going to win the title after Jay Lethal just won it, what, not even a month ago or about a month ago. But overall, I liked the show. Um, I have seen, like I said, I've seen clips of each match. Uh, I, I'm going to actually go back and watch the whole thing so I can, I can give you a true perspective on it. And I did want to do a review, but I wanted to wait until... Uh, I wanted to wait and see if um, uh, Soul Drum was going to do uh, a review on it too with me. Because it's kind of a historic event. Like they sold over 10,000 tickets. Like I think it was like 11,000 total. Just over 11,000. Which is pretty impressive for an indie show. You know what I mean? That's that's a good thing. They just got to keep that more consistent. You know? Um, I do plan on watching the... Um, was it the G1 Classic or G1 Special? 
I think, or what, however the hell it's called. Not G1 Special. Was it uh, <sighs> Super Card of Honor? There we go. That's what I'm thinking of. Uh, where'd I go? I went to uh, uh, I went to uh, Ohio to visit Strident. We do it every year. We I, I go I go visit him every year, and then we go to the the uh, Columbus Toy Show. It's a good toy show. If you guys ever get a chance, you should go. If if it's you know if it's within the realm of of distance wise, if it's within the realm of reason, you should go check out the Columbus Toy Show. They got a lot of good stuff there. Um, I really didn't spend that much money. I had a set budget and it was, you know, it was a lot of fun. I definitely had a lot of fun. So I should definitely go check it out. Uh, I think they have them twice a year. I think they have one in March and then one in September. So every six months, it's pretty cool. Um, you would love it if Rebel Tech made a saber tooth and Omega red. Um, I'm kind of, I don't know. I know there's different types of artist renderings. I don't know what it is. I just I I have a couple Rebel Tech figures and they just they didn't I don't know. They didn't they're not my cup of tea. I don't know. As far as like like I get I get they they like some people like them and that's fine. For me, I just I don't know what it is. They just I it's not what I want, I guess. But I totally get that you would want that style. I get it. Yeah, I I just I think I prefer when it, especially because I'm a more of a comic Marvel Legend collector. I think I just kind of prefer my Marvel Legends. I, I just if I'm gonna spend forty or fifty dollars on a figure, I'm gonna get a figure arts figure, you know. But that's just me. I, I just don't think Rebel Tech is at that point yet. To be rivaling, you know, if they start doing quality like on a more consistent basis, like like Figure Arts, um, even Mayfex, I still have my 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 quarries with Mayfex as far as their quality goes, because I've had some poopers in my day as far as Mayfex go, but I've also had some good figures. So, um, you know, it's kind of give or take. I just want things to be a little bit more consistent. Figure Arts has always been consistent for me. Um, Yeah. Oh, yeah. I get it. I totally get it, uh, Dumb Guts. I know. Did I see Wolverine? The Wolverine they made? Yeah, I don't like it. I, I It's a personal preference thing. I saw the Rebel Tech Wolverine, and I'm just like, I don't know. It's, uh, it's just, I don't know. I, I, it's just not my, my thing. I, I think the claws are too long. I think they're too bulky, too. Um, I mean, if he were to to bring his claws in, they'd be past his elbow. I, I just, I don't know. I think they're, t I, it's not my cup of tea, but I get it. It's, it's different. It's different types of art. I totally get it. Action figures are art. It's, it's all about, you know, we can look at a painting and see two different things. Um, and we could I could like it for something and then you could like it for something totally different or you could not like it at all. And I love it. You know what I mean? That's, that's art. That's, that's, it's always subjective. Um, yeah, Marvel Legends look too plain. I get it. I totally understand that. And like I said with this, even in my review, he's kind of blah. But when you look at the Toy Biz one, he's not blah. He's not blah at all, you know? He's got the paint applications that you want, you know? I think there's a little bit too much black paint shading going throughout, throughout the face. I, I think if they would have lightened up the, the face a little bit, Kind of looks like someone threw a bunch of mud in his face, but overall, I don't think it's that bad. And I wonder if I pop this head off and I pop that head on. Well, that head might be too bright then. It probably wouldn't look right. But anyway, I digress. Um, you know, that's why I said I still kind of, I think if I have to choose one, I'm going to pick this one. Like, if, if my house is, if my house, or if my house is burning down to the ground, they're like, okay, you can have one of everything like, like Noah's Ark. I'm going to be like, well, uh, uh, out of these two, I'm going to go with this guy. So, Oh, a lot of the Joes in the 50th line are questionable. Yeah, absolutely. There's a lot of good ones, though. There's there's a whole bunch of good ones. Whoa, my lights are just flickering. That's weird. Um, what is going on here? 
You guys can't see that, but I can. Oh my god. Anyway, um, yeah, like uh, Lady J, that Lady J and um, Baroness two pack. That is a pooper two pack. I did a review on that a while ago, and I was like, oh god, this thing is just woof, woof central. You wish the new Omega Red had some blue wash on them. Yeah, I think a black wash would have would fit the bill a little bit better because this has a nice black wash on it. Um, maybe just a very subtle black wash on the white would have done it. I feel like he's a little bit too bright. Now, if I'm ne if this is, these are my just my little gripes, this is not hurt the figure. Um, I like the way the tendrils are actually molded on here better than these just gaping holes on him. So, like I said, there's give, and, give or take between the two. He's kind of plain with paint apps. There's lack of them. And he's got the paint apps. But there's other things like these gaping holes in his arms because he had the big, big overgrown tendrils from the Sentinel where his tendrils, even though they're not non-articulated, they can't, well, besides swiveling, um, they're not bendable, that you can't, uh, they're pretty much pre-posed. You can still work with them, and I think that they look better coming out of his arm. But, you know. Had to add some paint to your Taskmaster. Yeah, the, the silver plastic. Yeah, when they do the silver plastics and stuff like that, you know. It doesn't help the situation. And it's always like that marbly style plastic like this. So you can see the marbleization right here. Right there. They use that marbleized uh, plastic. You wanted the blue so you look like it. Oh, I get it. No, I get, I get it, Private Private. Yep. Yeah, I get the blue. bringing Wolverine here so get a... I still think this is Wolverine this I still think I don't know personal preference wise I think I still overall prefer the brown and tan one to this one some people prefer this one to the brown and tan one obviously this is not the head he comes with this is the head that the brown and tan one from the vintage line came with but you know still works I still prefer the brown and tan Wolverine over this one. I, I think the brown and tan one has the better head sculpt. Or the blue one, it kind of looks like he's got, I don't know, not the, his ears don't look right. I don't know. Did I notice some of the Marvel Legends use G.I. Joe weapons that are enlarged? Oh, yeah. Yep. Of course. Of course. Yeah, the brown one's good. And he actually did wear the brown suit for periods here and there with uh, the Jim Lee look. You know what I mean? He didn't always wear the tiger stripe. I mean, obviously we remember him for wearing the tiger stripe because of the the animated series. But he, in the comics, he did wear the brown and tan. So, too. Yeah. I mean, I mean they're both good figures. I mean... I don't really have an issue, but, you know, like I said, if there's a burning building or if my house is on fire and they're like, pick a, pick a Wolverine, I'm going to pick the brown and tan one. So, there's that bit of information. Yeah. I, I, I feel you, Private Private. Yeah, I know. I totally get it. Because that's, that's what I remember from the Series 1 from Toy Biz. Not the Marvel Legends. I'm saying Series 1 from the 90s. Um, That was pretty much my first Wolverine. You know, with the retractable claws. What is going on with these flickering lights? Oh, my God. It's like crazy. Crazy in here. I fixed it. I'm not about to blow a fuse or something. That would be really suck. 
that would be full of suck. Yeah, I know that the Tiger Stripes were from the 70s also. It was different rendering, though. <laughs> you would burn with your collection? I don't know if I'm trying to do all that. <laughs> I don't know if I'm going to burn with my collection. <laughs> I'd try to save what I could, you know, like I'd be definitely be running outside with a, a pterodrome with a bunch of figures inside of it. <laughs> That's probably would make the most sense to be honest with you. Like I could just dump like a whole bunch of figures on my, in my pterodrome and just run the hell out of the house. And that would just be like, well, I guess I'm just going to get insurance money for the rest, you know? Terror Drum super special to me because it was like that was my my major holy grail that I got and I'm just so happy I have it. So happy. Like some for some it's the flag, for some it's the defiant. Um for some it's even the MCC or it's the the headquarters. For me it's the the Terror Drum. Run out buck, buck naked? Why would you be buck naked? <laughs> why would why would you be why would you be naked running out of the house? Because you didn't have time to put clothes on or something. <laughs> oh yeah, I can't sleep nude. That's I ugh, I can't do that. That's ugh. feel. Uh, I don't know. I feel exposed. I gotta have like pajama pants on and a t-shirt. So at least I'll have pajama pants on and a t-shirt. <laughs> Don't judge me. <laughs> it's funny though. <laughs> it's funny. Ooh, man. I don't know why I'm tired. I like slept the majority of my flights home. I gotta go for a run. So does Oreo. Right, buddy? That's right. But yeah, I don't know. You guys have any more questions? Let me know. Hit me up. Down for uh, answering any questions. The, uh, the toy show was, I think, seven bucks, in case you guys were interested. Or I, don't, I mean, I don't know where everybody's from, but. Uh, which Marvel Legend do I want the most that hasn't been released? Ooh, okay. Um, hmm. It was Thing, and it was the Fantastic Four for a while, but they just got released, so. Then it was Silver Surfer. I'd say, uh, oh, it hasn't been released. Oh, shit. Um, hmm. Oh man, probably K oh no, he was released too. God dang it. <laughs> uh oh, I'd probably say maybe Night Thrasher. Night Thrasher's in that list. Quasar is definitely I'd say Quasar would be my number one pick. So we have never we never got a version of him. So I would definitely say Quasar. Have I ever seen any new of the black any of the new black series yet? Uh in store? No. I didn't even see any at the toy show. Which usually there's at least one vendor that I know of that has stuff. And I asked him, I said, Do you have any of them? And I was like, No, nah, man, I'm dry. I don't have any. He's like, I only have from the previous wave that came out. Um, there was no exclusives there. Um, I haven't seen any. No one's really getting any it's it's like i feel like the black series is going to start picking up in about a month 
as far. I feel like they're way behind. Yeah, Quasar is one of my favorite characters. Like, definitely top 10. Top 10 on the, the Marvel side, obviously. Not top 10 overall, but. Uh, we did get a Marvel Universe Quasar. I would like an updated Doctor Doom. I've been saying that for a while. Uh, yeah, definitely Wendell Vaughn. Definite. It's got to be Wendell Vaughn. I don't want any other. No, I don't. Uh, I know some people liked the female Quasar. Isn't it? Eh, no, it's always Wendell Vaughn for me. So. I prefer that. I pre I would like a classic Wendell. Um, I would also like a Annihilation uh, Quasar. Well, actually, I have the customs. I have both custom. I have. I've shown them before. Um, I have the classic version, and I have the Annihilation mm -hmm. version. Um. Yeah, I would definitely want Night Thrasher. He's got to come with a skateboard. He has to. Because um, I want to start rounding out some new warriors. And he's like key component to that team. Because we got... Um, Darkhawk. Uh, we would need Silhouette still. Who else would we need? We have a Nova, so that could work. We have... Well, we have, what was it, two out of the... We'd need, uh, who else, Rage, I think? I'm surprised they haven't made him yet, you know? Did I play a new Spider-Man game? Uh, I did a little bit when I got home today. It's pretty much the Arkham, uh, the Arkham series. If you play Batman, the Arkham series, it's pretty much that game. It, it, I swear to God, it's like... It's just a larger map with pedestrians. <laughs> like, straight up. The uh, the other different thing in it, though, that does differentiate from the Arkham series is that the suits that he uses aren't just skins. They actually have abilities, like a special ability, each one. Which I think is cool. It's nice that they did that. But, um, I don't know. I, uh, I, it's, I mean, it's pretty much Batman, Arkham... Mm -hmm. The Arkham series. It's it's like the same thing. Even the the fighting is the same. It's crazy. It's basically Spider-Man's version of a Batman game. I mean, it's fun. Don't get me wrong. It's just like kind of, you know, I've, I've already seen it. Been there, done that, you know? You think it feels better? I don't know. Gliding through the city, it's the same thing. There's no difference between grappling and swinging. I mean, he would grapple and then glide. You know, I don't know. A lot, even the even the uh, the side story, like the side missions, are the, like they're pretty much set up the same. You know, like the detective skills are the same. The I mean, if I didn't know any better, I'd say the the original team. You know, Rocksteady did this video game that would just that, that. like. I, don't get me wrong. Like I like it. I like the. Uh, I like the game. It's fun. It's just that I'm used to it. You know, I just like when I play a new game. I want to be like be able to like learn it. When I was like picked this game up, I was like, oh, it's like I've been playing it for. I've played it like three times through already. Yeah, there's a Marvel Universe Quasar. Private, private. Yep. Um, he's got longer hair and he's he's the uh he's kind of the uh the annihilation. I want to say he's maybe a little bit after because he had longer hair after that story. Cause I think in Annihilation he had shorter hair.
I mean, yeah. I, I, as far as the new Spider-Man game, like I, de- I, I definitely had a lot of fun playing it. And I just feel like if there was another Arkham game, this would have been the size of it. You know what I mean? Because, I mean, they, they could only fit so much in it. And then they had to... And I feel like the map would have been bigger in Arkham Knight if they didn't have to force feed us the Batmobile. You know what I mean? Like, where Spider-Man is just Spider-Man, he's got a huge map. I felt like if they would have taken... If they didn't give us a Batmobile, which tons of people asked for, by the way. Tons of people wanted the Batmobile. That's what everyone was bitching and moaning about from Arkham Origins and Arkham City, is that they didn't get a Batmobile. But those maps didn't really garnish a Batmobile. It didn't need it. So you had to have a larger map to have the Batmobile. And I felt like, especially having Batmobile missions, like, um, well, the mission sucked because it took, it, it, they, they, they gave the fans what they wanted and then the fans didn't like it. So, I mean, it's like kind of like the fans kind of screwed up. I'll be honest with you. Like, the fans asked for a Batmobile, and they wanted Batmobile missions, and then when they got them, they didn't like them. So, I don't know. It's it's one of those things, you know, where you can't you can't please everybody. Um, the Quasar is it's the three and three quarter inch that came out. It's the Marvel Universe one. The whole Marvel Universe line is three and three quarter inch. So, uh, Quasar's never been made in six inch form. Yeah, the fight, I mean, the fighting's kind of, I mean, it's pretty much the same. I don't know. I didn't really feel any difference besides, you know, the, you know, some of the, some of the combinations are different, obviously, because Spider-Man is a different fighting style, but I don't know. I feel like, I don't know, me personally, I feel like because Spider-Man is Spider-Man, he should be able to, like, one-punch dudes. I mean, he has, like, super strength, like, he's not... He shouldn't have to go through the longer fights with with thugs that Batman does, you know, because he's not Batman. Like, I feel like a lot of the like even the big dudes, like he'd be able to like flick them and he they would go flying. You know what I mean? Like if if obviously, you know, like um, if the, if it's a boss battle, like he's going to have to fight more. But I just feel like some of them are just so. Batman ish. I'm just like this. I don't really feel like I'm Spider Man. Sure, I'm swinging and doing stuff, but like I should be able to just like one shot dudes that are just like regular plain old thugs. I know it would be boring and there would be no like, but that I mean, if we're going for a real, that's what would, I, that's what would happen. <laughs> Yeah, I know. Yeah, the timing with the hits and stuff, yeah. Um, I don't know. Uh I don't know. They make they make uh Marvel Legends makes I, I think we'll see a, a quasar. I think we will. Uh, whether, whether, what, whatever he's doing now is, is I think irrelevant. I think they've made tons of, I mean, the Fantastic Four has been irrelevant for years since, since they just got the license back and they just gave us all Fantastic Four again and no one thought we were ever going to get those again. So I don't know. I think that theory kind of gets thrown out of the window because, um, I feel like they've done tons of classic um like when's the last time we saw prowler prevalent in a story we got prowler you know what i mean like there's tons of of characters that probably didn't deserve a a figure just yet that got a figure where and they do they do classic costumes all the time so there's no reason why they can't do him yeah yeah, that's what I'm saying, dumb guts. Yeah, it's just 
it's it's Spider Man. Like he would, I would, he would just like be like, I don't have time for this, and just smack someone. They go flying, you know. Not they get knocked out right away, you know. <laughs> He's like, I got too much on my plate. <laughs> the story is is pretty good though. It's pretty cool that they're using Negative Man, you know. I like I also like the uh, the progression system too. It's pretty similar to Batman with the XP and everything, but you know, it's it's obviously a little bit more um involved. Hiya DC figures. Yeah, I can't wait for the um the Red Hood. Yeah, I'm not I don't I <laughs> I mean, I, I agree. I totally agree with you, Andy. Um, I I don't get the whole why we need a different version of Deadpool with everything. Yeah, Swamp Thing. Yep. Yeah, I saw that too with Haya Toys. I want to get some of the Haya Toys Predators, but uh, back to what uh, Andy was saying. Yeah, man. Yeah, I'm not into that whole, like, getting, I don't know, Gwen pools and the unteenth degree of, or unteenth version of Deadpool. I don't know. That's not my thing. Not into that. I have two Deadpools. I have the 90s one. I have the modern one. That's all I need. I don't need any more. No, no, no more, no less. All the other Deadpools I sold off. I just don't, don't care about it. Yeah, Gwen pools. Shouldn't exist, <laughs> as far as I'm concerned. I don't know. It's not my thing. I mean, I get people like them. People like that whole thing, that whole shtick. It's like Spider-Man. Like Spider-Man's got like eight thousand different. I'm, I'm obviously, I'm, I'm joking when I say eight thousand. He's got a a plethora of different versions of him, and I'm just like, ugh. Like Spider Punk, that's that's garbage to me. I don't know. I'm not ugh. I don't like that stuff. Like some of the suits in the game, I'm just like, ugh, no, I don't. I'm not. I'm not gonna go rolling around the city wearing spider punk. That's not happening. <laughs> I don't really think his ability's that great either. So, I don't know. I'm not trying to sit here and like shit on things, but because that's not what I'm, I'm. I'm about. I'm just telling it like I, I see it. That's all. So, I'm not trying to. I know how people get like mad defensive about characters and stuff like that but i'm just telling you what i like that's all yeah i'm not i don't i'm not feeling that spider different version of spider-man like i have was it i don't even have that many spider-mans i have a black suit of spider-man i have a young spider-man the pizza eating spider-man or pizza spider-man um and i have miles morales and I have his first appearance because I'm I'm all about first appearances, but that's it. That's all I have. I don't, I don't have fucking. I sold all my other uh, spider people off, spider men off. Um, I really dig his his villains, and I'm not really a villain guy. Like I'm not like all about villains. Like I'm all about the heroes. Like I'm if I have to choose a side, I'm gonna go with the heroes. You know. Yeah, I, I, you know what, the one I don't mind, and it's kind of a little bit colorful, is the one that Doc Ock made him in the beginning. He's like, oh, I made you a new suit. That I don't actually mind that much. Um, I don't mind the Stark suit. I don't mind the, his traditional suit, obviously, is what I, I like. The classic suit is cool, too, obviously. I usually roll around in the classic suit. Um, and, and the one that Black Cat, I don't know, I'm, and these are spoilers, I know, I'm fucking spoiling it up. Sorry, spoiler alert! But, um, there's one that Black Cat makes them. I like that one too, so. But those aren't as ridiculous as some of the others, like, I don't know. I don't want to ruin the game, so, I don't know. If, I, I know I'm going to get somebody in, uh, on, in the comments. I'm not speaking for any of my subscribers, but. 
I know I'm going to get some random person that watches this and they're going to be like, you spoiled the game for me. Nah. So that's what always happens. I always get one troll. So. <laughs> that's the way it goes. But yeah, the game is overall, I think the game is a lot of fun. I would like I would like a Superman game where you could like travel from different planets cuz I mean if you do a Superman game it's got to be like the biggest map ever but you'd have to use the fast travel system so you could like go to different planets like you can go to Apocalypse that'll be like a stage kind of got kind of treat it like Super Mario uh Super Mario Brothers 3 where you you had different levels and you could like you would have to go to different levels and each level would have its own theme, you know what I mean? Like you'd start off the um you'd start off the game on Earth and then you would you know work your way to through different plants and stuff like that. Because I don't want a Superman based game on Earth. I just don't want to see that shit. You know, it's like the most bland, boring way to handle Superman. Yeah, I know. I think, I don't know. I haven't heard anything about that Rock City Superman game. As far as I'm concerned, it probably, I don't think it's going to happen. Because that was supposed to happen years ago. I think they had that, they said it was starting, they're starting to work on it after Arkham Knight. Or it was like six months after Arkham Knight was released. They're like, oh, we're working on a project. We can't say what. And I'm like, it's Superman, we're not. We weren't born yesterday, bro. Uh, I know you're not big into Spider-Man, so I feel you. What pisses me off is the Spider-Verse. He's going way too far, in my opinion. Yeah, it's just it's just a little too much, you know? And I feel the same way about some Batman stuff. Like, the... Oh, my God. <laughs> I'm just going to turn these lights off. There we go. A little bit more intimate in here. Um, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I feel like that about some of the uh, Batman stuff, you know. Like Ga Gotham by Gaslight Batman. I'm just like, ugh, get this out of here. Same thing with, like, Noir Spider-Man. I'm just like, ugh, get this out of here, please. You like the white Spider-Man suit? Oh, like the the... The ele was it like the uh, I forgot what it's called. I know what you're talking about, the black and white one. Yeah, I remember they said they were going to be working on one. You don't like Miles, really? Oh, I actually like Miles Morales. I actually don't mind him. Oh, the main suit. Oh, okay. I don't mind someone else being, you know, S Spider Man also. Because, I mean, you look at it and how many Robins does Batman have? <laughs> you know what I mean? He's got, like, he's got, he had Dick, Tim, Jason, and that little dirtbag that I don't like talking about. You know what I mean? So it's like there's, there's room for another Spider Man that's not Peter Parker, I think. I think it's cool that he's featured in the game. Spoiler alert! I don't know. I haven't finished the game, though, so I, I don't even know. I've got up to a certain point, and then I just kind of gave it a rest, you know? Oh, the hero's mantle. Ah, uh, you can't be too... You can't, you can't be like that, though, because... There's plenty of, I mean, the, I mean, how long can Peter Parker be Spider-Man for? You know, what I mean, just same thing as Bruce Wayne. Like he can't be, like even Bru like even Batman Beyond. Like there's, there's that. You know what I mean? Did you not like Batman Beyond? Because I like it. I think it's a good progress. I mean, eventually, like the character can't be that character forever. There's got to be stories with that character, obviously moving on. I'm not saying it's it's got to be permanent thing, but 
I think there's room enough for other people to take over the mantle. Within reason. Within reason, I think. Like, like there's other, like, there's other, um, like, Doc is a perfect example. Um, Doc was murdered by the Saw Viper, and then his daughter took over. Well, no one gave a, no one batted an eye at that. So, I don't know. You turn that, oh, I know, the Noir Spider-Man. He still has those uh, Nick Fury arms, though. Lifeline? No, Doc got killed by the Saw Viper. I'm talking about, I'm talking about Doc. I think within reason it's okay to, to hand the mantle to somebody else. Unless it's Azrael Batman. <laughs> then you don't want to hand the mantle to that dude. <laughs> I like Lifeline. You don't like Lifeline? He was different from Doc. I mean, and it wasn't really like he called himself Doc. He's a totally different character. Like, entirely. It's not like the mantle was handed to him. You know what I mean? If he if the mantle was handed to him, they would call him Doc. You know? It's kind of like X-23 and Wolverine. Like, so in certain cases, I'm like, eh. Mm, eh. You know? But in, if it works, I think then it's, it's, it's an okay thing. Well, he had to replace him. There was nobody else to replace him. Who else was going to replace Doc at the time? Fuck X-23. <laughs> yeah, I'm not a big fan of X-23 either. I feel you on that one, man. <laughs> said fuck X-23 yeah I'm not a big fan of that character either I don't know I'm not a big Damien fan that's why I was saying that dirtbag I can't stand that character so much. he's like the he's like the he's like the Jason Todd that's that they wanted to make like it's like he's like an OP version of Jason Todd. I don't know. I just can't stand that character. I can't stand Damien. It's like we already had Jason Todd. We don't need another Jason Todd running around trying to be Jason Todd at a younger age. Like let's just cut that out. <laughs> just they should have left that alone. And I'm not a big fan of, you know, like and Strider and I have talked about this and we both agree on the same page with this like we're like, there's no way Batman would have ever allowed anyone to get his stuff and use it. He would have got his his he would have got him snipped. Okay, <laughs> he would have got a vasectomy before he let that happen. Yeah, I'm not. Oh God, don't even get me started on female snake eyes. That is trash. That is put it put that directly in the trash and burn it. <laughs> that is just I don't oh see this is why I can't read the IDW stuff. I just can't I can't do it, man. I wish I I I mean I kind of wish that it would go to Dark Horse. I really do. Because you get a real grimy feel for G.I. Joe then. You get the real deal, no joke G.I. Joe stuff instead of all this like SJW stuff constantly. Just make new characters. I am all about that, especially with the figure line. I want a whole plethora of new characters. And I want them to be introduced properly. You know what I mean? I feel like that's, like, I don't know. Me personally, uh, per, per, oh, whoa, I can't talk. Me personally, I feel like that's the next stage for G.I. Joe. They have to, like... 
Yeah, I know. I agree. I agree, Dumb Guts. I know. Yeah, there's a whole b a plethora of different characters out there, and you know, I don't know. But they're still they're still getting hung over on Salvo. Oh my god, that that character is just the drizzling shits. Especially the oh god, I don't, I, don't, I just can't I can't get started on the IDW stuff. I just can't. I mean, it's nice. Some some stories that they had were okay. Not everything is bad. Some stuff was okay, but the Aubrey Citizen stuff is put that in the garbage and burn it. And thank God he's not there anymore. So I don't know. I don't know. I don't want to get into a whole rant about that. But that drizzling shit. That is the Green Apple Splatters. The only version of Damien. I like is the recent Teen Titans animated movie. Um, I haven't seen that movie. I hear it was okay. But, I don't know. I kind of gave up on DC animated films after, what was it? That whole failed attempt at the Court of Owls movie. What was that? Batman versus Robin or whatever that. Batman and Robin. I don't know. Whatever. Once they started putting him into movies, I was like, no, no, no thank you. Don't want this. Don't want to watch it. Don't care. Get it out of here. But I hear they started, like, putting Damien in his place with the Teen Titans movie. So I might give it a watch. I don't know. I think I've just kind of had my fill of, like... That character. I just, I don't, I don't ever need to see Damien in anything else ever again in my life. <laughs> I just don't care. If he's in a story, I don't care. Um, I just, I can't stand him. And this is coming from a Jason Todd fan, okay? It's because I like Jason Todd because Jason Todd is Jason Todd. Now, when you start trying to give me a remold in a lot of certain ways, not every, not in every way, but in a lot of certain ways, we it's just another kid with issues. It's Jason Todd, as far as I'm concerned. If you want to generalize. Yeah, I know. He's on the... Eh, I'm not feeling that. That's Jason's thing. You know what I mean? That's Jason's thing. So. But... I don't know. I might call it quits here. Went over an hour. But. Yeah, it's always fun talking about this stuff with you guys. You know, whether we agree or not on certain things, it's all good, you know. Like, Strider and I don't agree on everything, too, you know. But, you know. It's fun to talk about this stuff. It's fun to, to, de to debate and. You know, talk about this stuff without, you know, getting upset or anything like that. Because at the end of the day, they're just characters. And we're all people, you know. We're all we're all like-minded people in a lot of different ways, you know. But, yeah, I always enjoy doing these. I'm going to, obviously, I'm not going to stop doing them. But, yeah, it was a lot of fun. Um, hope you guys enjoyed the review. Uh, I'm going to give everybody a shout out again because that's what I do here. Uh, Zorpox, thanks for stopping by. MG Villain, thank you so much. Be sure to check out MG Villain's channel. Uh, I think he's doing a live uh, video tomorrow, so be sure to check that out. Dem Guts, thanks so much for stopping by. It was a pleasure talking to you, buddy. Uh, Bentley Nash, thank you for stopping by. Uh, AND, definitely check out AND's channel, AND's showcase. Um, he's always got really good content up there. And um, private, private. Thanks for stopping by, buddy. It was a pleasure talking to you. Um, let's see. I don't want to miss anybody, so I'm scrolling slowly. Trent's five. Thanks for stopping by. Appreciate it, buddy. Stop on by again. I'm going to be doing more live.
let's see. All right, I think that's it. Um, thanks, thanks everybody who stopped by. If you were just lurking, that's cool too. Uh, be sure to hit the thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. Like I said, uh, I, I'm going to continue to do this. I've been doing, I, I've been doing reviews for over six years now. So um, be sure to hit the like button, subscribe. If you didn't like it, let me know how I can improve the content. That always helps. Constructive criticism is stuff that I can take. Uh, but uh, yeah. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed the review. Thank you. And I'll uh, have a great day tomorrow and have a great night tonight. And I'll see you guys on the flip side.